Hey guys, it's Annie, Creative Cliche. In today's video, I'm gonna be transforming myself into a Pizza Planet alien from Toy Story. So before we jump into it, if you guys aren't following me over on Instagram, I'll have linked right up here for you guys. I post just about every day over there if you wanna see more looks from me. And yeah, if you guys wanna see me transform myself into a Pizza Planet alien, then keep watching. For starters, ignore this greasy hair and my double chin, and we're moving on. Since I'm turning myself into this alien, I need to hide all of my hair, so I'm just starting off by applying a bald cap. Part of my whole philosophy as an artist is to inspire others to create while also saving money. So in order for me to do this, I get multiple uses out of my bald caps by trimming the edges, and I also construct most of my props out of paper. Just a quick trim to take off the rough edges, and you're good to go. Since I'm not going out in this look, I'm not gonna seal off the back of the bald cap, so instead I'm grabbing a hair tie and I'm gonna wrap this around the excess of the latex in the back of the bald cap, and I'm tying that closely to my hair just to pull it tight and give it a cleaner look. I'll be back to seal off that bald cap in a second, but I just wanted to glue my brows down first. And before I go in with my glue, I always like to use a toner first. This just makes sure that my brows are nice and damp, and this just helps to flatten the brows and build up layers without the glue getting all chunky. Then I'm going in with a non-toxic glue stick, and you're gonna wanna go against the grain a few times and then smooth it out. Back to the bald cap. So to ensure that the cap stays attached to your head, you're gonna wanna apply some kind of spirit gum of some sort. And then to blend the cap into your face, you're gonna wanna use liquid latex. So this just creates a smooth transition instead of that harsh line from the bald cap. To conceal the darkness of my brows, I'm just using this cream paint. So this is gonna hide that color of my brows showing through when I go to paint my skin color green. Speaking of that green skin color, I'm just using a few coats of this green face paint to get the perfect base color down. And I always find that when I use a smaller paintbrush, this just allows you to get more coverage without leaving paint streaks. And then it's on to creating the most important feature, which is the third eye. I'm using a black eyeshadow to map out the shape that I'm looking for. And honestly, this is the hardest part because you really want it to match up with your natural eyes as much as possible so that the whole look just looks seamless. And once I'm finished, I use a damp Q-tip to wipe away that green paint and fill it in with white. I had to take multiple pictures throughout this entire process to make sure that the people lined up correctly, and also just to compare the eye shading to my natural eyes. Here, I'm just adding some light pink eyeshadow to the eye because if you really look at your eyes, they have like a slight pink hue to them from the blood vessels, so they're not like a stark white. To add a little bit of fun, I went in with some purple eyeshadow to the top and bottom lids of all three eyes. I always like to go in with my finger to finish out an eyeshadow look. Your finger holds more pigment than a brush does, so I like to dab on eyeshadow at the end with my finger just to make it more vibrant. When it comes to creating a fake eye, precision is key. So I'm grabbing the thinnest brush that I own and I'm just gonna line that bottom bottle, that bottom waterline black, and I'm gonna use a thicker brush just to add the highlighting to the white of my eye. To match the middle eye, I'm lining both eyes with black and then I'm adding a coat of mascara just to prep my eyes for fake lashes. I'm adding more shading and highlighting to the eye as I go. It's always important to mimic the light reflection that your natural eyes have. This is just really gonna keep that illusion up and make it pop. So this is where taking pictures of your eyes as you go really helps out. Going back in with that detail brush, I'm deepening the appearance of my eyelid crease and I'm also creating these bottom eyelashes using small thin strokes. Before I could mimic the top lashes, I needed to see what we were working with here. So I chose these eyelashes because I really wanted to give it that dramatic effect, but also keep that cartoon feel. So I applied both of those eyelashes and I continued in with that detail brush with some black cream paint. And I'm just trying to duplicate that effect. I'm just gonna take a quick break from the eyes and I'm moving on to the rest of the face. 
Since the aliens are toys, I decided to add that plasticky glow using highlighter to embody the character a little more. And for the beauty aspect, I just made sure that I highlighted all of the high points of my face, as well as creating that light source to my overall look. To keep with the beauty theme of the look, contouring was essential, so I'm going in with this dark green eyeshadow to chisel out my cheeks, and I'm also using this to round out the top of my head just to add some depth, and then I'm going back in and chiseling my neckline as well. Now that I'm finished with my contour, I'm making sure that I didn't miss out on any other opportunities to glow, so I'm going back in with that highlighter. Moving on to the suit, I'm using a purple paint to create the collar, and I'm using a cobalt blue to create the rest of the suit. To make the suit logo, I'm using a damp cube tip to wipe away that blue as I map out the shape, and I'm using a light yellow to fill in the ring and an orange for the planet. Continuing with the plastic toy look, I'm using that highlighter on the suit as well. I just really feel like this just makes the whole look come together. Now for the fun part. I lucked out with this cardstock paper that matched the character perfectly, so I'm just creating the antenna for now and I'm gluing it on. To add more detail to the face, I'm using a dark gray eyeshadow to shade the outer corners of my lips, and I'm also creating these, these little smile bags under my eyes just to give me more of an, like a friendly appearance. To finish off the props, I used that same green cardstock paper to create the pointed ears, and I decided to add a fun touch all together and make the claw. I always receive messages from aspiring artists who want to create similar looks, but they say that they don't have the money to start. For me, I'm a huge advocate on spending the least amount of money possible because creating isn't about buying, it's about making. Just about all of my props are made entirely of paper or foam, which can be purchased in bulk for extremely low cost. And I started out using a $20 paint palette from Amazon. So never let anything hold you back. In fact, the less you have, the more creative you have to be. I used foam to construct the entire prop, silver glitter glue for the claw, and a chrome paint for the base of the claw. Since foam isn't very sturdy, I glued on a piece of cardstock paper in an L shape to the back of the prop, which also allowed me to glue it to the top of my head. To make the prop look a little more realistic, I used a dark gray eyeshadow to add some depth to the base of the claw, and we're all finished. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you liked it, make sure to give me a thumbs up. That really helps me out. You can also subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, stay creative.